Hi, I'm Shane from PDQ.com. Let's get started with PDQ Inventory. We're going to run this in free mode. First time you install Inventory, you're going to be presented with this window. We'll go ahead and hit Next. Once again, we're going to use this in free mode. If you do have your trial key or you're, like, or you're already a pro or enterprise user, then you would obviously select that option and um, uh, put that, that key in. But we'll do free mode. Now, you are going to need to add some credentials. Uh, these credentials need to have administrative rights on the console computer. And if these are the only credentials you're going to use for your environment, then um, any computer that you want to scan. You can uh, specify additional credentials if, if one set of credentials will not work. But for right now, during the initial setup, you can specify one and then add uh, more later on. So we'll put the uh, password here. Uh, we are using this um, in, a, in a Windows domain, so uh, we're using domain credentials. Definitely recommend it if you have any domain machines that you want to, to manage. So this creates, by doing this, we're creating a Windows service called PDQ Inventory. And um, that way you don't have to have the console running, um, you know, to do, some, to do some basic management. All right, so here is our PDQ Inventory window. Now out the gate, I'm going to go to this All Computers collection. Out the gate, only one computer is added, and that is the console computer. So uh, how can you add additional computers? In free mode, there's only a, a few options uh, versus the pro or enterprise modes. But you can go over here to the computer menu, add computers, and you'll see you can either uh, navigate to an active directory container, such as uh, an OU or a security group, um, or you can go by name. By name is very simple. It's something like this, where you um, just type in the name of the computer and click add. And once again, those are the credentials that you'll use. And if it resolves, that doesn't mean that it's online, that green check mark. That just means that this name has been resolved in DNS. We'll just say OK, and it will start scanning that computer. Um, or once again, to add computers, we'll go over here to Active Directory this time and uh, navigate down this go to deadwood computers now if you want to select a container and move all computers from that container over you can just click this uh, two these little two arrows here uh, or you can just select a handful of computers and click the one arrow which moves just whatever is selected and if you want to drill down to sub ou sub containers then make sure to have that include subtree selected so that's how you can add those computers and now I want to jump into collections. We break up computers in uh, PDQ Inventory using what are called collections. Uh, the most common collection is a dy dynamic collection. For example, here's a collection for a PowerShell. And we'll drill down. A collection can contain other collections uh, or sub-collections. And you can see that these are machines that have PowerShell 5. And as we're scanning, new computers are coming in. Double clicking on a collection, a dynamic collection, will allow you to edit this. And you can see that here we're saying there's a PowerShell version in the computer table that's between 5 and 5.9. So a dynamic collection is a list or grouping of computers that match certain criteria versus a static collection. And you can create new collections, incidentally, and we just go to this top level here. You can create new collections using these uh, buttons. A new static collection. A static collection is just that. You actually specify the computers that you want in this collection. And it's not dynamic. They're just, they're always going to be there until you remove them. So let's say I want to add D10 Chase 2, D10 Call Lab. Very simple. And I call this a uh, working. Maybe this is uh, a, a good, this is something good for you if you uh, just want to create a static a static collection of computers that you're working on at that moment. To remove computers, you can just double click on it, select that computer, click the opposite, uh, the arrow opposite, same OK, and it's, uh, and it's removed. And then, can't stress enough the, uh, the dynamic collections. Let's say I just want to do a quick collection on machines that have Google Chrome. This is where you start defining filters. We'll do a very simple filter. You'll see all these tables. Uh, here's computer. We're going to go to application because we're looking for Google Chrome. And you see the uh, corresponding columns in the application table. And here we're going to just say that the 
application name contains the string Google Chrome. Say OK. And these three computers, uh, out of the eight that we've added, these three computers have um, Google Chrome installed. And see other. Uh, please refer to other videos to see how you can build uh, more complex filters um, in your collections and in your reports. So that's just getting started really quickly with PDQ inventory. Uh, please note that any uh, changes that you need to make to the actual program, you want to go to Options Preferences. In previous versions, this was in the File menu. We've created a new menu called Options. So you go to Preferences, and this, this is where you can specify the, the different credentials. Like maybe you, you do have separate, separate credentials. Actually, I should say this was actually moved. Credentials was moved to its own option. There we go. Uh, you want to add an, another scan user. This is where you would add that. So if you have any questions, by all means, hit up our support forums. And um, good luck with pdq.com. Thanks, uh, thanks for checking us out. We'll see you later.